Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, Tony Hager to my left, and this is Global Wrestling News. First story this week, Penn State won its sixth straight Southern Scuffle last Saturday. They finished 25 points ahead of second place Oklahoma State. Can anybody stop the Nittany Lions? I mean, if you thought that they didn't have point scorers this year, uh, they have what it takes to win another championship. They brought, we knew we were going to have Nico, we knew we were going to have Rutherford, but the game changers, Bo Nickel, Jason Nolf, the freshmen that have stepped up at the, the scuffle. I mean, they, they put on a show, OW. You, you seem like a guy who loves to keep his feet moving, loves to score a lot of points. Where, where does that come from? Um, well, I don't really think there's any other way to do it, honestly. I mean, that's what wrestling's about. It's exciting, it's fun. You get to go out there and compete and do that and score points, and that's what's fun for me. It's always has been, so I don't really like to... When, when you're out there scoring one takedown a match or no takedowns in a match, that's, that's not really fun for me. So I just like to go out there and let it all hang out. How do they compare to, say, the Taylor Ruth era teams? I mean, is this start of another dynasty? I mean, the, the difference between, um, well, both of them are really similar. Uh, Ruth, Taylor, they were known for getting majors, techs, and falls, and that's going to be the difference maker here. Again, the, uh, this team is looking to score as many points as they possibly can. They're not just looking to squeak by and get a win. And, and I'm telling you what, they're here to stay. They've got Mark Hall, Nick Suriano, and, and Mason Manville coming back. I mean, mind blown there with this, this recruiting class, and they're not done yet, so. What do you take away from the Oklahoma State performance? You know, they're winning, but uh, Derringer, Heil, I mean, those are the big name wrestlers. They need to figure out how to widen that gap. Like, Penn State wrestlers are doing. They have, they're the point, winning. The points gap. Yeah, trying to go for those majors and techs. They're winning, but it's just not by enough. Those points are what win national championships. So they got to find a way to, to widen that gap. All right, here's what stuck out to me. Four first year guys in the finals. Are you kidding me? Yeah, 157 pounds featured two big names, Joe Smith from Oklahoma State and Jason Knoll from Penn State. Both have potential, I think, for multiple title runs. From what I have seen, uh, you know, biggest performance was clearly, though, clearly. Bo Nickel, outstanding wrestler, uh, award winner. He, he dominated uh, Brian Real Buto from Cornell, 14-7 to in the semifinals, and after that, he kind of just walked through it. So, I mean, big, big story for a freshman to get the outstanding wrestler award at the Southern Scuffle. All right, from the Scuffle, we move on to the Midlands. The Iowa Hawkeyes did what they do there, winning their third straight in Evanston. Iowa's performance, it was impressive, but was it as impressive as Penn State's? No, uh, I don't think even close in my book. I mean, I'm, everyone knows I'm a Hawkeye fan, but it wasn't. Penn State's freshmen stepped up. Their leaders did what they were supposed to do based off their seeds. Iowa had its ups and downs. There were some pauses from their top guys, but the middle guys is where uh, they, they just fell short of. So they have a lot of question marks in their lineup and Tom Brands and company are, I think they're gonna figure out, but I thought they were gonna get the answers at Midlands and they definitely didn't. Well, Grandview University's Andrew Long will not be competing for a D1 title, but is he the best 141 pounder in the country? That, that's a tough question. I think after the Midlands, I think a lot of people thought that he could be, but in my eyes, I mean, 141 just wasn't a, the ultimate bracket at Midlands. Uh, it didn't feature those top guys. He needs to be at these top level tournaments wrestling the D1 guys. So I mean, we might not even hear from about Andrew Long until NA NAI National Championship. So unless he can somehow find to get some opens where there's that tough talent, he's not gonna be in that question for the top 41 pounder in the nation. I think we will hear from him, but not at 141. I think we're gonna hear from him at 149 pounds starting this weekend at the National Duels. Well, Tommy Gant down three-time NCAA qualifier Cody Pack at 157. Who the heck is Tommy Gant? <laughs> Last year, you know, he redshirted, so I think a lot of people just really forgot that name. But he went 23 and one competing unattached tournaments. He won four open titles. So, and right now on the season, as it stands, he's undefeated. And every single match that he had at Midlands, Steve Foster and I were just glued in on that match because he's a he's what wrestling needs. He's exciting. He's explosive from his feet. So right now he's in my type top five. He, he's got a contrasting style between Martinez, Miller, and Nolf. So uh, it'd be interesting to see when we can get those type of matchups. You are fired up. I got to tell you what. But so am I, and I hope you are as well. We got to take a quick break. Next, we'll talk to the head man at Ohio State on Kyle Snyder's decision to come back. Stay tuned. You're watching GWN.
All right, well, if you thought Kyle Snyder's college career was over, well, you're wrong. After taking the Olympic redshirt in the fall, Snyder has enrolled for the spring semester and will make his sophomore debut February 3rd. In this exclusive interview, Ohio State head coach Tom Ryan talked about the return of his top star. Well, he decided to come back about two weeks before Christmas. Um, obviously, the decision was made, you know, after the U.S. Open that he should redshirt, take the Olympic waiver, because that was the best thing for him. And again, this is about Kyle Snyder first. It's certainly about Ohio State wrestling, but it's about Kyle Snyder first. And, and what is the plan that gives him the best shot of making that Olympic team on April 10th? Uh, we did, we, we, I, I flew out to Kyle's home uh, just after Christmas to discuss it with his family first. Uh, once uh, they were interested in the idea, obviously there was, a, there was an intricate plan put together. It was detailed on, on, on pros and cons and, and all the different options. We discussed that with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Snyder and the family. And then when the call was to Bruce Burnett, Bill Zadick, um, and ultimately, ultimately, uh, it may not be the pie-in-the-sky utopia situation, for him to make that Olympic team, but it is a great plan uh, that in no way uh, we don't feel diminishes the opportunity that Kyle has deserved, and that's to be uh, to be on that uh, to be on that Olympic team um, in 2016. I think it opens up a lot of doors. Kyle also has two international tournaments coming up this year. Will he practice with the team or continue training mostly freestyle? So he does both. So again, we did not change anything with his plan in talking to Coach Burnett and Zadik. He was going to be in Colorado in the final the following weeks. He's going to be here the following weeks. He's going to go overseas. He's going to compete for Ohio State. So we did not alter his training plan at all. So he is training in both facilities, both at the training center and at Ohio State. The good news is when, when Travell and Kyle go to the training center, they go together. And when they're here, they're together. So also, from a tactical standpoint, you know, it's, it's very freestyle-focused skill. So um, although we know there's some mat wrestling in college, uh, the focus for Kyle is, is still on uh, his freestyle aspirations. How many uh, events do you plan on him competing in collegiately this year? So as you mentioned, obviously two overseas, right, in freestyle. Uh, so he's got two, two big events. Uh, and then for, for Ohio State, he will compete against Penn State uh, on February 5th in that dual meet. And then he will compete um, against Wisconsin at home on December 12th. And then, which we liked a lot, the March uh, event, the Big Tens, is in Iowa City, which is the same location of the Olympic trials, which we liked from a planning standpoint. So he'll compete in the Big Tens. And then he'll compete in uh, the NCAAs in Madison Square Garden, Another, you know, great event for him to prepare for those trials, you know, roughly three weeks later. Wow. Well, final question. If Kyle wins an Olympic gold medal this summer, does he return and become a Buckeye again? So there is no reason at, at, at this point to think that he will not return. Uh, if he wins the gold medal, Ohio State, along with uh, USA Wrestling and the Olympic Committee, uh, allow Kyle to receive the funds that he would earn by winning the Olympic gold medal. So financially, there are no issues. Um, you know, Kyle's plan is to graduate from Ohio State. Uh, and he has, you know, this decision, the other positive of this decision is it shortens his window. I mean, we know Kyle wants to win many gold medals at the world's and Olympic level. He wants to compete to 2028. This shortens that window by a year. So after this national tournament, he's got two more years here. You know, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle obviously is the, is the consummate team guy. I mean, this guy is, he's family, right? He's family here. And he, he completely understands looking, his decision was based, obviously not only was best for him, his decision was based on Micah George wrestling really well. He made 41. We weren't sure he could do that. Uh, Miles Martin looks fantastic at 74. We weren't sure he could make 74. So some of the question marks that we had as a program uh, started to really become non-question marks, which is another reason why Kyle said, you know, it makes sense. If I come back in, we insert Miles, Mike is wrestling well, Hunter Steber is healthy, Ohio State can go back to back. And I can assure you that that was one of the major reasons why, why Kyle Snyder chose to come back and help his team uh, win their second consecutive, consecutive title.
You are a man embarrassed with riches. You understand that, though, right? I do. I am blessed, my brother. You are, you are blessed indeed. Tom Ryan, one of the reasons why you were chosen as America's great coach just last year, and a jury of your peers to recognize what you've done and obviously what you are continuing to do. The red shirt comes off. Kyle Snyder goes back into a Buckeye uniform, and proudly so. The head coach, Tom Ryan, has been talking about it. We appreciate the one-on-one -on -one time, Tom. It's uh, an eye-opener, as always. Uh, what do you guys say out there? Go Buckeyes? Yeah, go Bucks. We got Michigan this week. And, and Scott, as you know, the fun part is always, you know, we release this at 12.01 a.m., right, New Year's Day. So the, the, the symbolic piece was that Kyle Snyder committed to Ohio State uh, on New Year's Day, his junior year. So we released the fact that he was going to be in our lineup at the same time. So uh, go Bucks. So they had only one loss without Snyder in the lineup, and they just pulled the red shirt off of Miles Martin as well. What does this tell you about Tom Ryan's uh, intentions? You know, he obviously thinks they're good enough to win another national title with these guys. I mean, it's not a huge risk because we don't know if Snyder is going to come back if he, ha you know, he wins that uh, Olympic gold medal. So um, Miles Martin... Um, that is uh, something that Ohio State needs to win a national title. So I don't think it's they're not thinking about rebuilding. They're thinking about winning that title again. I think it's safe to say that Snyder would win a national title at 197, but he's going to be a huge size disadvantage at heavyweight. Adam Kuhn and Nick Wazdowski could potentially make the Olympic team. How's he going to get past those guys? I think he's going to have to go to those quick outside shots against these guys. Um, he's got a really good double leg, but... He hasn't hit a double leg on the guy like Nick Wisdowski or Adam Kuhn, so be interesting to see if he does work a lot of arm bars, arm ties, and work outside shots instead of going through that double and possibly getting flattened or pancaked out. So um, I think his technique, his speed, he's going to he's gonna be in the running for a, a heavyweight title, and he could be the, the instant favorite. If you're going to hit a uh, quick double leg on Nick Wisdowski, I think you have to leave yesterday. All right, we've got to take a quick break. Coming up, we'll dive into the international scene. Stick around. You're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. It's time for Quick Hits. Our own wrestling nomad, Dan Lobdell, just released his very first national rankings of 2016. They're spanking new. What do you say? Let's start with freestyle. A little bit of controversy there at 65 kilos. Definitely controversy. I mean, these, these fired up a lot of Hawkeye fans when they saw Brett Metcalf at number two behind James Green, who hasn't even wrestled a match at 65 kilograms. That doesn't make sense at all. This has been Metcalf's spot, which I would think it's been for more than a decade. It, it seems like it has, but I mean, based off my conversations with Dan, you know, he's basing this off performances at the world level. Brent dominates here on, on U.S. soil, but Metcalf is four and five on, on the world level with zero medals. Green is seven and three with two medals. So again, domestically, Metcalf has that upper end, but he gets it done. Green gets it done on that world level. Let's go backwards just a little bit. 57 kilos. Daniel Boy Dennis shoots up from seventh to third. How has Dennis been able to improve this late in his career? I mean, clearly we have to point to him being in the Hawkeye wrestling room. Terry Brands has a way of refocusing wrestlers to think like him, and that is a gold medal. I mean, the team trials will be interesting, though, just to kind of see if, if how him and Ramos wrestle and their thought process underneath one row. 86 kilos saw a big shift with Dakin Taylor going from 8 and 9 to 2 and 3. Did these wrestlers leave any doubt that they could handle the bump to 74? Going into this tournament, I was really curious just how Taylor would fare more than Dake, but Taylor tech falled uh, Ed Ruth 11-0 in the semis, and then Dake had wins over Gavin, Reeder, and then obviously Taylor en route to his uh, U.S. Senior National Championship. So he, these guys are going to be pushing pushing the bar to, to get that team, team spot. Let's go to Greco if I can interrupt. We'll go to Greco. Greco, of course, not a lot of change there, but the biggest, if there was a lot of change, would be at 85 kilos. And it's about Jake Clark. Yeah, Jake moved up uh, to second behind Jordan Holm. Clark has competed in the 2006-2010 World Championships, so he has that experience to challenge Jordan Holm 
for that 85 kilogram spot. What about Spencer Mango? He dropped to second at 59 kilos. I mean, uh, Mango has had a stranglehold on this weight class as well, just like kind of Metcalf does, but he lost uh, on criteria in the van at the Vanta Cup and but they, that was in November. That was in November, so we didn't. We thought we were going to get to see them wrestle each other in Vegas, so um, that was really disappointing to see. They, and they're both on the same team. They're both wrestling for Army, so maybe that had to play in, but wrestling fans definitely missed out in, in that match. Olympic bronze medalist Randy Miller moved down a weight and comes in at number two, 69 kilos. Surprised? Randy was number two at 75, and it will. I think she'll be an instant contender at 69. The biggest thing to note at 69 is for Veronica Carlson dropping from number one to number six after losing twice to Forrest Molinero. All right, stay tuned. We've got to take a quick time out. Coming up next, it'll be USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott. Stay tuned. Let's head to the mountains and catch up with USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott. Obviously, or for some anyway, the big story right now is the return of Kyle Snyder. Do you see this having an impact on his Olympic future? Well, I think there's a little bit of a risk there. I mean, obviously, Kyle's already in the finals of the Olympic trials, best two out of three series. Um, getting prepared for that's very important for him. However, um, you know, he's got a huge commitment to his Ohio State team. Uh, he wants to help them win the national title again. Moving would, up to heavyweight is going to be a different challenge for him. He's not going to be wrestling guys that are quite the same size as him. But uh, good for Kyle. I mean, he, he feels he can do that and also uh, keep his edge in his Olympic wrestling. He's going to still go on some uh, tours this year prior to the Olympic trials. So um, if he's able to do that, make a difference for his college team and, and still come in in top form for the trials, then that would be great. Wood Magazine has released rankings recently, and they already have him at number one at 285. How does this change the heavyweight picture and overall the team race? Well, it's going to change the heavyweight picture. It's just going to be hard to tell. I mean, he hasn't wrestled most of these guys. They're all going to be bigger than he is. Kyle's only going to be in a limited number of college matches, maybe a few duels, the Big Ten championships. Um, so it's really hard to say where he's going to stack up. Obviously, he and his coaches feel real confident that he can do very well there, maybe even win the weight class. So uh, the, the Kyle's uh, going to score some points for Ohio State at the NCAA tournament. And, you know, his, his goal is to go in there and win and help the team win. So it'll, it'll change things, but there's not going to be a lot of head-to-heads where he's actually wrestled these guys before he has to wrestle them at the NCAAs in New York. Gary, there's only a few Olympic qualifiers remaining. Who do we need to keep an eye out for at the Dave Schultz later on this month? Well, the Dave Schultz, obviously, in each weight class, uh, an American will earn a spot in our Olympic trials. So it's a really important event for those who haven't qualified. And uh, in some of the sports, especially with the freestyle men, there's not a lot of qualifying events left. So if you're not yet in the field at the trials, you probably need to be at the Schultz. You know, The other big qualifying event uh, for men's freestyle will be the last chance qualifier in Cedar Falls. Uh, the women in Greco have a number of other qualifying opportunities uh, in, in addition to the Dave Schultz. But uh, really, it's a great tournament. We'll see some good foreign competition. And, uh, you know, you know you'll see all the athletes there that e either want to get some good matches or still haven't qualified for Iowa City. Gary, we head to the Far East, and we're talking about the India Pro League. How long before we see something similar like this in the U.S., and did you see it as a success? Well, it's hard to tell yet how successful the India Pro League was. I spoke to Adeline Gray about it yesterday and, and Melissa Lampy, who competed over there, and, and they made some good money and they got to compete quite a bit. Um, uh, we'll see how that works out. I mean, obviously they had the resources to set that up, to uh, spend $3 million on athlete salaries, and, and they traveled all over India. They had a night every match for most of the month. So it's a great model, uh, and if they're able to 
make it work. It'll be good to see it in the future. Uh, as far as in the United States, uh, uh, clearly the wrestlers would love to have uh, that opportunity. It's just getting the business side down where you have the sponsorships, um, the, the people that are investing in the program. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to see this kind of a league for American wrestling, but uh, there's still a lot of work to do. Gary, we appreciate you filling in for Wayne Boyd. It's always good to talk to you. Happy New Year to you, you and your staff. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Scott. Same to your group. And obviously, we're looking forward to a very busy 2016. A lot of things going on at the Olympic level, but we also have a, a full program for youth wrestling, and it's just going to be an exciting year. Absolutely. Gary Abbott has been our guest. All right, Tony, we're out of time, sadly. Don't forget to check out the TMWC store online for 25% off coupon using the code HOLIDAY. I said HOLIDAY. You can use that to get yourself a big-time discount. And so far, our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, my partner in crime, Mr. Tony Hager, I'm Scott Casper, and we'll see you next week right here on Global Wrestling News.